Proudly, we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to Proudly We Hail, a program of your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we are happy to present as our star Mr. William Holden in The Doctor Gets a Call, written by Rich Hall with music by Eddie Scrivanick. The long gray convertible sped comfortably along past the Garden Park racetrack and onto the coast highway. It was a cold, clear night with the moon hanging low like a giant pumpkin. And in the car, Elizabeth Scott moved a little closer to her husband, Dr. Nathan Scott. She smiled happily as she spoke. Oh, darling. Hmm? It's so sweet of you to remember our anniversary. Well, I'm, I'm a very thoughtful character. Oh, didn't you know? Well, there, there have been moments when I wasn't so sure. Like our anniversary last year. Oh, what happened last year? Well, you were to meet me for a big dinner and a big celebration, remember? Oh, oh, yes, and then I got a call. Uh-huh, and you didn't get home until 2 a.m. <laughs> and we celebrated our anniversary dunking donuts in one of those all-night hamburger stands. <laughs> well, I, I'm making up for it this year. You do like the seacombers, don't you? Oh, it's a little out of the way, but, oh, I hear their dinners are simply marvelous. And you like being alone with just me? Oh, what do you think? Well, I can only speak for myself. Well, I, um, I think I, I like to be alone with you. Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. Only for a couple of thousand years. <laughs> oh, darling. Uh, I say, what's that over at the left there? Oh, that's the Sands Point Lighthouse and Shore Station. Oh. And that's the seacomb. Oh, good. Hungry? Vanished. Oh, good. I'll have them lay the kitchen at your feet. <laughs> Say, hey, listen to the breakers. Sound good, don't they? Oh, but the water must be cold. Ah, <laughs> sissy. Uh, well, here we are. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I, I believe I have a reservation, Dr. Nathan Scott. Oh, oh, yes, Dr. Scott. This way, please. Here you are. You like it here by the window. And now, what can we bring you? Well, we're, we're not very hungry. <laughs> Who said that? Oh. Perhaps some cherry stones to start with. Mm -hmm. Very good. Cherry stones. Anchovy salad. Anchovy salad. Cracked crab. Cracked crab. And a donut. A, a donut? For sentimental reasons. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very good, Dr. Scott. That uh, donut sort of stopped you? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, we provide everything here. You do? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, do you wish the donut sugar or glaze? Oh, <laughs> that'll teach you. I just bring one any old way, as long as it'll done. Thank you. You'll excuse me. Oh, look, honey. What is it? Oh, it's a police car. Hey, they're pulling up right out in front. I wonder what they want. Now, listen, my pet. If you want to get curious, let's investigate that music. <laughs> I can still execute a very brilliant rumba. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Dr. Scott. There seems to be an emergency. Uh, this way, officer. Are you a doctor? Oh, uh, yes, but you uh, see... Doc, we need help. <laughs> I'm sorry, you but... You don't I... understand. We got a call from the Sands Point Shore Station down the road. They, they need a doctor back. But I'm trying to tell you that... Doctor, I... we haven't any time. Are you coming or not? Well, what can I say? Oh, dear, I knew something would happen. Oh, honey, don't they realize... Darling, that... look, you stay here and start dinner. I... I'll get back as quickly as I can. Oh, no, you don't. I'm coming with you. Well, all right, then. Let's go. <laughs> Well, at least, darling, this is more exciting than last year. Yes. Uh, where do we go, officer? Over this way, to the radio shack. Now, uh, can you tell me what it's all about? Well, it seems that there's a freighter somewhere between San Francisco and Honolulu with a very sick sailor and no doctor aboard. They radioed the station here and asked for help. We took a chance that they're at the seacomber because it's so close. Well, let's, let's hurry. Uh, maybe I can still give them a hand. I know you can. <laughs> Pause briefly from our story, The Doctor Gets a Call, starring William Holden, 
to bring you an important message from your war department. Are you the one man in 250? Out of the millions of young men eligible for a good job in the new regular army, 40,000 can qualify each month, or one out of every 250. A job in the army is high paying. Men who qualify and start as privates receive a base pay of $75 a month. To this is added the value of food, clothing, lodging, medical and dental care, which is furnished without charge, and there's no income tax to pay. This is equivalent to a salary in civilian industry of nearly $50 a week. How many young men with no previous experience and training can start with such high pay outside of the Army? But that's not all. The regular Army soldier is trained in any one of many scientific skills or industrial trades and has the opportunity for further off-duty education up to college level. At the end of only 20 years' service, he is eligible for retirement on half pay or up to 30 years of three-quarters pay. Go to your local Army recruiting station today. If you qualify for enlistment, you'll be one chosen out of 250 eligible. And now, Act Two of The Doctor Gets a Call, starring William Holden as Dr. Nathan Scott. Inside the radio shack at the Sands Point Shore Station, Dr. Nathan Scott is greeted by a very worried radio operator as he opens the door. Oh, you're the doctor. Uh, come in, come in. That's right, oh, Anna. what a time I've had. What a time, what a time. Thank heaven you're here, doctor. Well, I... For me, I should be on the flat of my back in bed. I'm a sick man, doctor. You are? Oh, my back, it's been bothering me for months. And look at my throat. Ah, uh, uh, I should be in a hospital this very moment. Well, you but see... no, here I am worrying my poor heart out about a sailor aboard the Aloha somewhere in the middle of the Pacific. Yes, yes, oh, now... dear, I'd better see if I can reach them. Come over here, doctor. All right. Captain Canal on the Aloha. Captain Canal on the Aloha. This is almost too much for a sick man to endure. Uh, Captain Canal on the Aloha. This is Captain Canal. This is Briggs at Sands Point. Are we coming through all right, Captain? Oh, yes, fine, fine. Oh, How you're, about us? You're all right. I, I, I have your doctor, Captain. I, I'm practically a nervous wreck, but I have your doctor. Uh, just a moment. Right here, Doctor. Speak right into the microphone. Oh, this job is killing me. Hello, Captain. I understand there's something wrong out there. We have a lad named Colt aboard, Doctor. Very sick boy. Ah? Uh, what seems to be the trouble? Well, he's had terrible pains in his stomach. I was worried about appendicitis. I had him moved right down here to the radio room just in case we'd have to perform an operation here. Yes, now tell me, when did the pains begin? Right after the evening mess. You have a medical kit there? Oh, yes, Doctor. A stethoscope? I believe so. Uh, uh, yes, yes, here it is. All right, now, Captain, do this. Put the earpieces to the microphone and hold the other end over his heart. How's that? You'll have to put the earpieces right up to the microphone. Let them touch. Ah, that's better. Now, uh, hold them right there for a minute. All right. Now you can take them away. Uh, how about his temperature, Captain? His temperature jumped way up, Doctor, but it's come down now. You say he got sick right after mess. Did he eat anything the other boys didn't eat? Well, no, I don't think so. But then, Doctor, come to think of it, this lad cold is quite a chow hound. His locker is always full of all sorts of canned things. All right, Captain, I... I think the boy has nothing more than a case of old-fashioned pip. I could be wrong, but I think that's all it is. Now, do this. You have a sedative there in your kit? Oh, yes. Give him a sedative and keep him well covered. Well, how much should I give him? Follow your directions there in the kit. We'll stand by here, and I'll let us know what happens. Well, thanks, Doctor. Thanks. We'll be waiting for your message. Here's the radio operator. Oh, dear, you don't know how relieved I feel, Doctor. Uh, Captain Canal, this is Briggs at Sands Point. Elizabeth. Can we help Elizabeth, honey. Oh, yes, right darling. Oh, what is it? Now, look. Call town right now. Uh -huh. Go right down the list in the directory. I want to get another doctor down here. I want to be sure. How you doing? I'm not. Well, keep trying. Operator, may oh, I doctor, have doctor, water? I have a message from Captain Connell on the Aloha. Uh, uh, Colt's temperature down, pain almost gone. Feels much better, and we do too. Many thanks. <sighs> well, that's fine. Oh, hon, you can forget the telephone. I, All right. I think everything's under control. Say, where's that cop? 
We've got an anniversary dinner waiting for us back at the Seacomber. Oh, he had to leave on another call, but it's just a short walk back, really. Yeah. Come on, sweet, let's go. I'm really hungry now. Oh, doctor, that was marvelous, the way you diagnosed that case. You know, I've had so much trouble with my back. Perhaps you could do for me what you did for that boy coat. Well, uh, I'd be glad to look at it, but I, I think you're talking to the wrong man. They practically shanghaied me back here at that restaurant, but... Uh, well, I'm a doctor, all right, but not the kind you think. You see, I'm a vet. Huh? A, a veterinarian? Well, the best well, darn horse doctor I ever married. Uh, but in this case, I think it was all right, don't you? Well, uh, I, 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 I... Well, a veterinarian can always prescribe treatment for a colt. <laughs> Come on, hon. Uh-oh. Do you see what I see? Oh, it's closed. Well, the seacomber's closed, darn it all. Uh, but wait a minute. Right across the road, that all-night hamburger stand. Must we? Well, how choosy can you get at this hour? Come on, honey. <laughs> all right. You know, I... I was just trying to think. What? Do you dunk with your left hand? You do, don't you? <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring William Holden. Before leaving you, here's an important message from your war department. Whoever heard of putting food in a refrigerator to make it warmer? Well, that's exactly what cooks of U.S. Army Task Force Willow are doing. But their refrigerator warehouses are reversed with the units designed to heat instead of freeze the food. Placed in huge assembly areas, the food is already frozen by the frigid Arctic climate must be warmed before it can be prepared for eating. This is just one of many problems being met by the Army Task Force stationed in the frigid temperatures at Adak, Alaska. Other similar units are training and experimenting at Ladd Field, Alaska, and Camp McCoy, Wisconsin. They are testing, besides food, clothing, utensils, and equipment under conditions of severe cold. As a result of these experiments in cold weather, living conditions in the future are expected to be improved for everyone. In other tests, Army scientists have developed new methods of water purification, food preservation, and storage processes, and longer wearing clothing. Army technicians are continually working in such fields as radar, supersonics, medicine, and engineering. The new regular Army program of research and development goes on daily. Only the highest type of man capable of being trained to operate the most modern equipment is eligible to carry on the work of the new regular Army. Each month, there are 40,000 of these good jobs available to young men between 17 and 34 who can qualify. Regular Army soldiers are the highest paid in history. A private starts at $75 a month and gets free food, clothing, lodging, dental and medical expenses, and has no income tax to pay. And he's paid while learning. For overseas service, he gets 20% extra and an automatic 5% raise every three years. For men of ability, chances for advancement are good. Go to your nearest Army recruiting station today and find out if you can qualify for one of these 40,000 good jobs with good pay. Thank you, William Holden, for appearing on our show. Proudly We Hail will come to you again next week. Listen in. Listen <laughs> in.